Hey guys, it's RB. I'm here with Alicia Reiner, star of Orange is the New Black. You know her from other shows, Sideways. But this week, she is at Tribeca as an actress, as a producer, with a film called Egg. And uh, getting a lot of advanced, crazy advanced notice, a lot of buzz. They called it on deadline a female chamber movie, which yeah. I didn't talk about. But talk a little bit about it. Talk about the project and talk about what's been going on with it, how it came together. Sure. I am, um, you know, I last October, so about a year and a half ago, um, I bumped into the writer and I had done a workshop of this script over 10 years ago and loved it. And, um, and she said, you know, uh, I, it was a play at the time and she said, I wrote the movie of it. Would you want to read it? And I read it and David read it and we both thought it still spoke so deeply to subject matters that we'd never seen talked about on film before. Um, it talks about friendship. It talks about choices in parenthood. It talks about money and how money changes things and the relationship between art and commerce and parenting and career. And we loved it. And we said, you know, let's, let's, do this. Um, and then I met Christina Hendricks at the Women's March very um, aptly. And the minute I met her, I was like, she would be so brilliant in this role. And so we offered it to her and she loved it. And then we met Mariana Palka, the director. It like, it all just sort of magically came together. We met Mariana and she loved it. And she like read 19 pages and was like, I want to do it. And then she said, I had a dream about Anna Camp. How about Anna Camp for the other roles? So we hired Anna. Like, we didn't even have a casting director, seriously. And, um, and we invited um, an amazing woman named Michelle Gainless to produce with us. She was the president of Comedy Central and had just left to sort of do her own projects. And we, I, I like to say we made sort of, you know, film summer camp this summer. We, oh, sorry about that. Um, it, uh, we, we shot at an, in an abandoned bank building where we created the loft where the movie takes place. And, um, and we hired all women. We hired female heads of every single department and our crew was like 60 to 70% women. And that for me, you know, as a woman creating I did this with my first movie too. I, I produce to create opportunity for women. You know, it's like the studio system has its own system and I'm powerless over that system, but I can, when I create and when I'm the producer and when I'm raising the money, I can make whatever choice I want. You know, with my first movie, I, I said, I want to play a woman married to a woman. I wanna, I, I wrote the role, you know, I, we hired a spectacular writer, Amy Fox, but we wrote a, like a treatment of the script first. And I said, I wanna be a woman, I wanna be married to a woman, and I wanna be married to an African-American woman because I can, because I have that power. And on this film, I actually, my husband was not written as any particular race. And um, because my real life husband was playing the other role, we said, we really want to hire someone diverse for, to play my husband because we want to create as much roles for people of color that we can. So that's the fun and the power of being a producer is you can change the statistics. You can change what you think is wrong because you have that power. Yeah, and I, that's really interesting. I want to get into that a little bit because you and I go back about four or five years and one of the very first conversations we had at South by Southwest was about this idea of not playing into what was going on with the studios and controlling what you can control and being more active and trying to pick your own project, not giving away your power, basically. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, and now here you are with the film, all female cast and crew and everything like that. How... What was the support there instantly when you went to go raise the funds and everything like that? Like, what, how, what you was know, some of the things you to, to Particularly do? to your viewers, I say, don't make a movie unless you think you have, you know the people to raise the money from. You know, like, that's like, you know, I, I always use the example of 
I would never make a movie about bird watching because I don't know any bird watchers to raise money from. Right. On our first movie, we chose Wall Street because we thought, oh, women on Wall Street, we've never seen their story. And they're all these badass women. I want to tell this story, but also I feel like those women will financially support this story. Mm -hmm. and, um, and they did. Um, and then we, you know, made them 115% in less than a year. So I then had future investors. Um, and in fact, ironically on this movie, I didn't expect a single one of them to invest in this movie because it's such a different movie. It's such a different world. It's the art world. It's much more, um, hipstery you know it's not women on wall street this movie is a little more bohemian and um and so i didn't count on that but i think they they all so support the mandate of hiring women mm -hmm. and and my mandate of saying i'm this time i mean i'm hiring even more women last time we didn't hire a female dp i really wanted to but we didn't and this time we did, and we hired a brilliant woman named Selmira Gainza, who had never shot a feature before, because it's so hard to get your first feature as, an, as anyone, but particularly as a woman. And she's so talented, and she will, I am sure she will now shoot hundreds of features. Um, but getting that first one is so hard. And I had investors who thought it was more important that we support women and that we give women chances than it was to have the knowledge that they'd shot five features before this one. Right, right. And the film you're talking about, the one prior to this is called Equity. People yep. Know, people should go check that out, go find it. Um, what did you learn as a producer on Equity that informed this film, putting it together as a producer? Was there any, were there any sort of tough life lessons with Equity or? or oh, did such a good question. Um, I think <laughs> just like giving birth to babies, I'm such a mama. You don't really remember your first birth, like God makes it so you don't remember. So when I think about equity, I just think it was a Cinderella story, you know, like, which it wasn't, it was so hard every step of the way. Um, but it was such a Cinderella story because we sold it at Sundance. We sold it to Sony Picture Classics. We had amazing distribution. We made our investors money back. So, um, and I don't remember the hard life lessons. Like I think you purposefully, your body purposefully forgets the pain like birth. Um, so on this one, I can remember some of those life lessons. Um, I would, you know, and some of them you almost don't want to share because it's like, you get a little ashamed of your mistakes. Um, with this one, here's what I will share. The, having an amazing lawyer is everything. Spend the money. Yeah. Get a great lawyer. It's everything. On this one, we didn't hire a casting director. And I, even though, like, it, I was like, oh my God, these people are our friends. And we lost someone last minute. We lost, you know, like, the part that Benga plays was originally going to be another actor and he was on a TV show and the TV show had promised to take care of us and they didn't at the last minute and a month before shooting we needed to find an actor and I was ashamed to go I have so many friends in casting but we didn't have it in our budget to hire them and I didn't want to ask them as a favor like it felt icky yeah go to a friend and say, we don't have money for you, but would you do this? And, and it's so funny because now all these, all of those people were like, why didn't you ask for my help? So that I would never do that again. I would ask for my friend. I would ask my friend for help next time. I would say, please help us. Well, you know, we'll pay, we'll pay you deferred. We'll do something. Um, but I was ashamed and that's, you know, Humble, 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 stay humble. Yeah, um, so and, and don't let shame speak. Shame's just a waste of your time. I felt stupid. And I wish I had just been like, you know, we're stuck, help. Yeah. 
Well, and I, it's interesting you said, I mean, for, and I agree with that. You can't let shame have any, I mean, this is hard enough. I mean, the fact yeah. that you're doing it alone, uh, you know, shows a lot of guts and, and uh, you should never be ashamed of anything in that regard. But, you know, you spoke about having a great lawyer. Speak a little, I mean, very briefly, speak a little bit to why that is so important when you're doing an independent production. Um, I want to say one other thing before I do say that. I want to say... The other thing is like, give yourself, like making a movie is a tantamount task for anybody. It, for even if it's your 20th movie, it's, if it's an indie, if it's a hundred million dollar movie, it's a tantamount task. It is really hard work and give yourself a break. I don't mean don't do it, go do it. But like, I'm not, I'm not perfect at it. Like I've made hundreds of episodes of television, I feel a lot more confident as an actress making television mm -hmm. than I do. This is my second movie as a producer. I'm, you know, I'm new at this. And it's, I, I have to give myself the break. Like, oh, I'm a new producer. I'm not going to do it perfectly. I'm going to make some mistakes. Um, so in reference to a lawyer, I would say contracts, Contracts are everything when you're making it and contracts are everything once you've made it, when you're selling it. Yeah. And it will make your life really, really challenging selling it, which hopefully you get to do if you don't have all your paperwork in order. If you are not good at paperwork, if you are an artist and you're like, I'm gonna produce my own movie, find a line producer who rocks at paperwork. Like, you have to have documentation on everything and a lawyer is a piece of it and your line producer is a piece of it and if you don't have those two pieces in place i am telling you at some point in your life you're gonna want to die and i'm really lucky i had both i actually learned the easy way on equity because my producing partner on that father was a lawyer or is a lawyer and he did so much free law work for us and I did not I, you know I appreciated it at the time I appreciate it even more now because when it's not your your father um, or your producing partner's father or your brother or whatever use your connections um, it's really expensive and navigating if you're gonna do a flat fee or if you're gonna do an hourly is really tricky. Um, I would say for an indie, do a, I would say do a flat fee. It's gonna seem like a lot of money, but make sure everything you need is included. Like do your research, talk to people who've made 20 movies and ask like, what, what do I really need from a lawyer? What kind of paperwork am I gonna need? What, Ha because it's always it's always more than you think. We 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 were like, oh, it's only five actors. We don't have we don't have a lot of contracts. We have one location. Like it's gonna be so easy. There's always things that you don't anticipate, and there's oh, and those things you need legal documentation for to be able to sell it. Because otherwise, you try and sell it to Sony Picture Classics, and they're like hey, this piece of music, do you have rights to it? And if you have no chain of title, they freak out. Or I imagine they do. I've never been in that position. I've always had all my ducks in a row, but I can't imagine, you know, as being the A-type OCD girl that I am, I know that you have to have all those pieces in place. And I learned that really from having a lawyer on our team on my first movie who was, you know, family. And I was, so the second time around, I was like, oh my God, we have to hire someone to be that person. Yeah, no, it's great advice. I mean, it really is. And you see so many people, even on stage 32, who have moved from working inside sort of the studio system, not necessarily producing, but working for people mm -hmm. at the independent side, and they don't realize what, you know, what goes yeah. on. Yeah, because in a studio, there's, that staff is there. It's yeah. built in. Yeah. So let's talk, let's go back to where we kind of came in, which is that, you know, again, five years ago, we were talking about controlling your own content, controlling your own material, and here you are doing it. It's been so inspiring for me to watch it. I mean, with Equity a couple of years ago, I was like, I forget it. I was rooting from so hard from afar because I'm like, this is exactly what you were talking about. 
Now there yeah. are a ton of people on this platform that are doing the same exact thing or want yeah. to do the exact thing. They want to control their own content. So maybe, you know, some advice or some thoughts on going about it. You spoke a little bit about, you know, material that helps you raise capital, probably material you're very passionate about as well. But, you know, what are some pieces of advice? What are some things you've learned in these last five years that might be helpful to producers or even writers looking to control their own content or filmmakers looking to produce, et cetera? I, you know, a lot of people, I'm, a lot of people have asked me to coach them recently because it's like be, doing this is, it's like you learn so much. And um, the biggest thing that I will say is it's a lot of work and and you have to be willing to do the work like if you want to make a movie like this movie we made i got the script in october we were shooting by august that's less than a year that doesn't that you know i make it sound magical it is not magical it is hours and hours and hundreds of hours of hard work so never think if you are doing it out of the studio system, it is outrageous amounts of work. And it's sort of a tiered system. It's first you find your material or if, if it's your material, like if you've written, if you plan to write and direct it, know, know your audience and do your business research. Like the minute you put on a producer hat, you are a business person. You are an entrepreneur. You are no longer an artist. You are a business person and you are selling a product and do your research into that market. So, you know, if you research female driven content and look at the last couple years, actually female driven content has done as well, if not better than a lot of male driven content. Um, you know, Wonder Woman did gangbusters. Girls Trip did gangbusters. All of these female movies did incredibly well. And you need a business plan. Like if you want people to give you money, you need to prove that you are worthy of that money. So do your research, know your market. If you're doing a horror movie, research horror movies and create a business plan just like you would to start any business and ask people to invest in you. Um, again, the lawyer comes in to help you do the contracts for that, to help, how do you raise that money? Use, use sites like yours, use, you know, I use New York Women Film and Television, but SAG Indy does it. There's also, you know, the Producers Guild does it. There's all sorts of sites that will teach you how to, like what you need to do to have your ducks in a row. I like to build a deck, which is really I learned to do from other people with biz with businesses like, um, you know, like uh, Soul Cycle, for example, um, or Birchbox. You know, they they have a deck, which is where they show you what what they're doing and what investing in this product is. So have a deck. What we would do also is we would have fundraising parties where we would have a PowerPoint presentation. We would you know have people I would sponsor it with a like alcohol company and snacks and um and we would do a PowerPoint presentation on what what we're doing and what you know and I would have graphs and I would have I would show people why it's worth investing in mm -hmm. so that's something that I feel like people aren't really clear on the other thing that people aren't really clear on is nobody really knows what a producer does right? right let's be honest and the the reason no one knows what a producer does is every producer does it differently and some producers are just producers in name on my you know on both of my movies there are producers who just wrote a check and got a producer credit that's one kind of producer there's actors who get a producer credit which means they'll get a piece of the back end and they get a producer credit, but they don't really have anything to do with it. Other actors, you know, like the Reese Witherspoons of the world are super hands-on and are doing everything themselves. And I'm of that latter category. Like I 
bootstrap produced this movie all, you know, with my husband and with my producing partner, Michelle, but it's not like I was an actress and a producer in name, but you never know who's what. Yeah. It's one of those secrets of the producing community. You, and you never know how good a producer is because they may have just put their name on something. They may have brought an attachment to something. They may have brought money to it or they may have brought a star to it and gotten a producer credit. Let's say, you know, I'm best friends with Meryl Streep and, uh, and you're, you have a movie that would be perfect for Meryl Streep. And I was like, oh, I'll introduce you to her if you give me a producer credit. That happens all the time. Absolutely. And then I get a producer credit and I've done nothing except make an introduction. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you never know. So you wanna really, if you're bringing on another producer, you wanna make sure you know what they do, what they have done, like what they've actually done on their past movie, just not like, oh, they're a producer on it. What does that mean? What did they do exactly on that movie? It's really okay to ask if you are dating a producer, you know? Yeah. Um, I plan when I, you know, as I make more content to work with lots of people, I love working, I love, I hate working alone. I love working with other people. I love working with other women and, as I meet other female producers, it's kind of like dating, you know, like I'm happily married. Um, but as I meet other female producers, I think like, oh, you're really awesome. Like I've seen what you've made. I love what you made. You've made a lot of money back on the projects you've made. Um, I like your taste. I like the way you talk about producing. Like I've seen you, you've asked me for recommendations for a DP or whatever. So I know that you're actually doing it, mm -hmm. you know, when, and, um, and so you like, you're kind of dating each other and you're like, Oh, you're cool. I don't, I don't want to work with you in the future. Yeah, that's really cool. And it's very important. You, and you got, you have to know what everybody's role is. And that's very, you know, a huge part of it because people end up getting disappointed or you get halfway through and there are expectations and there's bad feelings and the project falls yeah. apart. You see it happen all the time. So you really have yeah. to know who you're getting into bed with. So yeah. now let me ask you this, because you said you're, you know, you're a hands-on producer, which obviously you really are. And it's a lot of work. And I, and I'm glad you emphasize that. And I always say that you're, if you're a creative in any capacity, you're an entrepreneur. I totally yeah. agree with that. Why, if with so much work on your plate already, why also act in the films? Um, I have no desire to do anything but act. If I could, um, if I if I were super busy with acting, I probably well, so you're producing too. Though. But you're producing too. So I'm saying, is it is it? Did you ever have? Did you ever say to yourself, "I'm just going to produce this one. I'm not going to actually act." Because it's just no, does, I don't do it. I mean, I produce to act. Okay, yeah. I really like if I I produce to create opportunity for women, including myself. Awesome. Now. There's, I have a couple of projects that, um, you know, like I have three TV shows in development. And if I, if one of them goes and I'm on it and I'm on orange and I'm on better things and there's no, there's no other person, you know, like if I have no time, then I would hire someone else to be in that TV show. But I, I acting is always first for me. So and there are a couple of projects that I have um, where I'd have like a smaller role, um, but yeah, that's not, that's not why, I'd, you know. Yeah, but that's what well, you answered the question. It's all about what we talked about. It's all about controlling your own content. It's about creating opportunities for yourself, which I think in this day and age is more important than ever. With so much content being created, why not? control as much as you can control. Yeah, I'm an act, you know, I think there's, it's like there are writers who produce, mm -hmm. produce their own writing. Sure, um, absolutely. And there are directors who produce, to produce their own directing. And then maybe after 20 years, they produce other people's stuff too. You know, like Spielberg is a great example. I think Spielberg started, he never had any interest in producing other people's work, right? But now he's like, oh, I've done a lot. I like producing other people's work too. So yeah. eventually, sure, in 20 years, I might do that. Absolutely, why not? Yeah, yeah. All right, I'm gonna ask one last question because I know I should say, I should have said this at the top. You're getting your makeup done because you're in the middle of this madness in Tribeca. Everything is crazy. We'll say it again. Egg is premiering this week and very excited about that. 
Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm going to let you go. But leave one, one, maybe just one last piece of motivational advice for the community. Again, you know, just the, you know, because it's, it's a struggle. It's a fight. What, you know. I was, you know, I have a couple of things to say. One of, one of, one of them is don't wait, create. Like that's always been my motto. Don't wait, create. Number two, my dad's motto that is on his tombstone, which is make a difference, have fun, tell stories that make a difference. Don't just tell stories because, you know, you'll look pretty in the story. Tell a story that needs to be told on this planet to make this planet better because we really need art to make this world better right now so that's my biggest piece is like find art that makes our world better that's what we really need right now and go make it that's awesome perfect perfect well always great talking to you you too good luck with everything oh good luck with the film and i'll check in on you a few days i want to see how it all went uh please god i'll be able to say yes we sold it for Seven million dollars yeah, or something like that. good vibes your way. But thank you, Alicia. Always. Thank you. Kind of Great to see you. Great to see you. All right. Okay, Talk take soon. care.